We're out here today with Susan Kurt at Crestmore Prairie, a state dedicated nature preserve, and we're hoping to capture some pollinators at work pollinating. And Susan is going to help us to figure out what we need to do to take incredible pictures just like her. <laughs> so Susan, we're looking forward to this today. I'm looking forward to it also. So I wanted to show you a few of the items that I use to often take macro photography images. And first off, my favorite is always in my back pocket. It's my cell phone. There's definitely photos that I take and videos that I take with my cell phone all the time. And it's always on hand. But when I'm looking to do a little bit more in-depth photography, I usually have two different camera setups that I'll use. I'm gonna show you the first one, which I've disassembled. So I have a camera body. I shoot Canon. Don't worry, other companies are just as good. And I will have a 100 to 400 millimeter lens. So you can get fairly close to an object without actually being close to it. However, you probably noticed that bugs and other insects can be quite small. So I do have a converter on here that extends the range. So I can actually get closer to the object using this. This is from Canon. Other companies do make um, these teleconverters also though. This just clicks right on in, assuming I can match up all the little red dots. And it does make the lens quite heavy. So you get quite a bit of a workout when you are using a lens like this. <laughs> I also have a sun shield. If you buy lenses, they'll sometimes come with these. It does help reduce glare on the lens. Before I put that on, I do like to wipe it down with either a microfiber like cloth that won't scratch the lens, or you can also get the cloth ones. So once this is all put together, it looks pretty impressive. But this is just a hood or, you know, to cut out the light. The other one that I will often use is this macro lens. The lens on here um, will, starts off at a macro. It goes one to one, which means that the object is as big as it appears. And then it goes out to five times magnification. But this is how I get a lot of the really close up macro photography shots. And the lens itself is very very tiny again not a lot of light so you have to use a different you have to use a flash with this and that's this funky thing you see here on my camera what i have on the front is basically a diffuser and by using this i don't get a lot of that glare and white whited out spots on the flower or the insect i'm taking a picture of and there's a bunch of different ways you can do one of these. Some other things I always recommend, extra camera cards, yeah. <laughs> extra camera batteries, yeah. and since I have a flash that requires AA batteries, I try to keep those also. And I like these little fun um, battery holders. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Susan. Are we yes. going to go out and take some pictures today? That is the hope. That's the hope. So we just got to go chase some, some insects around. All right. Let's do it. All right. We're here today at a black soil prairie called Crestmore Prairie. This is a state dedicated nature preserve owned and managed by Shirley Hines Land Trust. We're going to head out on the Keith Board Nature Trail to try to take some incredible pictures of pollinators in action. So a lot of times, especially before I start targeting an insect, I like to go through and I say, hey, I think I'm going to look at these plants over here. So I'll take a quick picture okay. and I'll look at my screen. Mm -hmm. If you forget to do that, all of a sudden you realize you've messed up with some dials or done something else and it's either completely dark or completely, completely whited out. And so I just like to take that initial test shot. And then I can start looking for insects and other organisms that I like to see. I do occasionally forget to do this and I'm usually unhappy when that happens because that's when the fun stuff comes flying around. I can see one that's in a flower. And now I'm just trying to keep focus on that flower and wait for it to emerge, which is just it. Got our little metallic bees on them. 
So these are uh, fairly small bees, and you can see each flower has at least one. And this is one I would normally use the more close-up lens, but I also like taking video to see the um, action that's happening. A lot of times you want to get more eye level with it, and mm -hmm. so I took some pictures standing up mm -hmm. of this butterfly, and then I crouch down to try to get a look at it head on. Mm -hmm. And that brings a lot more personality to the insect, the butterfly, the beetle, the bee. When it's really windy, that's sometimes when I just break out the old cell phone and see if I can get some video. And if I'm hand holding my phone, I often like to do it in slow motion because you can have a little bit more camera shake. But doesn't always have to be that way. A lot of times what I would do is take pictures with my cell phone first if I don't have my camera out. But we're going to try to get a picture of this with the camera and this contraption setup that I have going on right here. Okay, but there is a little bee on here. And I can go in, take a couple pictures. Watch it fly away and then hope I had everything, look at my screen and hope everything was good. Good news is he went to the next plant. So I'll zoom in a little bit and I've decided I need a little bit more light so I change my flash system here and I go in again. And because I usually take pictures without a tripod, I do like to brace myself as much as possible. So like even here you can see I'm bracing my lens against my leg mm -hmm. a little bit. We're still watching the bee flying around though. And he has decided to abandon us, he or she. <laughs> so yeah, so we have a little metallic sweat bee that I was taking pictures of. Um, it has now flown away. But it's really fun to watch insects through these close-up cameras or through through a lens because you can actually see what they do, how they gather the pollen, how they interact with one another. I do a scatter shot approach on a lot of the insects and then when I get home and can look at them on my computer screen or even on the screen on the camera, I can then go and try to identify and see what I have looked at. Right. And my biggest tip, no matter what direction you take the insect's photo with, get the eyes in focus. If the eyes are in focus, we'll be drawn in. As, as human beings, we are attracted to eyes. And so get them in focus, and it doesn't even matter if the rest is blurry.